she was known as the great man a member of the bearded sisters a firebrand politician and activist who challenged president kenyatta and Moise regimes both inside and outside of parliament the first nandi and current chini woman to cling onto the position of the member of parliament in this series of the women warriors of africa's history i bring you the story of romena chelagati mtai stay tuned and have it true and thrill when the story of kenya is written and told very little is spoken about the great women in the early 1970s 60s and 80s who contributed towards shaping and putting the regimes of the time on their toes so in this series i bring to you the story of philomena chiragati mtai she is one of the women whose contributions during the kenyatta and moi regimes cannot be assumed yet very little is known or even recalled about her chelagati mtai was born on the 29th of january in 1949 in tezire lesos she was the last born child and daughter to Atoni Kimtai Arapukago and Pauline Kogo. His father was a very prominent local farmer. Light like from his child her childhood, Cheragati had a spirit of activism and political accountability. Something that saw her expelled from Highland Girls High School the current day or the present day moi eldolet girls in this particular uh, episode cheragati mtai had led her fellow students into a strike and as a result she was expelled she later joined the university of nairobi and pursued political science a true indicator of a spirit of political and social activism at the university she was a student leader and also an editor of a newspaper called the platform however due to his radical stance and ideas she was repeatedly suspended from the university despite the repeated suspensions that Chirogati Mtai faced at the University of Nairobi in April 1974 she completed her university education 6 months later she filed for the position of the member of parliament for Eldoret North parliamentary seat so in October 1974 when the uh, seat of um the parliamentary seat of uh Eldoreth North fell vacant because the incumbent member of parliament mr uh, william saina had been imprisoned chelagati mtai decided to contest for that particular seat as fate could have it the young Charagati Mtai, at the age of 24, she became the first Nandi and Kalen Chinuguman member of parliament. It is important to note that at that particular time, as a young, you know, she's only 24 years old and she was the first Nandi and Kalen Chinuguman member of parliament, she had to face a lot of challenges ranging not only from the oppression of the opposition uh, by the ten regimes but also the cultural challenges that impeded women in terms of politics of the time so she stood beyond the domesticity and the femininity to pave her way to a field that was dominantly masculine and male from her region to be a member of parliament for her constituency 
It is important also to note that during her tenure as the member of parliament, Acharagai Mtai criticized President Chomo Kenyatta's uh, way of governance, corruption, and political assassination. And of course, this did not sing well with the regime of the time, leave alone President Chomo Kenyatta. In parliament, she joined a group of men, uh, of other Fokoy young parliamentarians that was called the Seven Beheaded Sisters. So the Seven Beheaded Sisters members included people like the Attorney General Charles Choncho, Martin Skuku, Dr. Chipule Wasuma, Rawren Sifuna, Abuya Abuya, George Anyona, uh, James Orengo, and Koigi Wamwere. Two years later, in 1976, Cheragati Mtai was detained for two years for inciting squatters who had infected the Siwa Saisol farm. So like her predecessor, uh, she lost her seat. So she was released in 1978. And in 1979, she defeated the tenure member of... Um, Parliament for Eldoreth North Parliament, uh, parliamental seat, Shalma, in the elections. And she, she was re-elected. An affirmation that actually the masses, she was popular among the masses and really people had faith in her. So during her second tenure as a member of parliament, she's an, um, remembered for highly criticizing the government for its poor response during the 1980 famine. In 1981, with now President Moi as the new president in the, in the country, uh, she fled to exile in Tanzania after learning a plot to detain her. So she returned from Tanzania in 1984 and they decided actually to keep away from politics. Very little is known as to why Chiragati Mtai decided to keep away from politics. But after her turn from exile, very little was heard of him, of her, in terms of the political dynamics and the political activities in the country at that particular time. Nonetheless, when she came back, she decided to reconcile with the regime of the time, that is with Kanu, and as a result, she was appointed into a senior position in the Kenya Commercial Bank, a position she later lost. She also worked within the Kanu headquarters, and she was also a member in the Standing Committee on Human Rights. So despite the fact that she didn't actually... Uh, continue much into Kenya's political space, she continued with her activism in terms of human rights, etc. In 1999, she was fired from the position, uh, from her position in the Committee for Human Rights via a radio bulletin. So, like, it didn't, she didn't receive a letter, uh, a formal letter for you know, dismissal. She just learned about her dismissal via radio news. And that was something that was very common during President Moi's regime. As a result, from Mena Chiragati Mtai, which drew from the public space to his father's farm in Telige in 1999. One could wonder why could Chiragati Mtai retreat to her father's farm and not maybe to her own farm or even to her husband's home, etc. It is important to know that Chiragati Mtai was never married and she was always affirmative about it that she didn't want to get married. So Chiragati Mtai never married, nor did she get a children. So literally, she didn't have a family of her own, like her mother, etc., apart from her nuclear family, that is her father, her mother, etc. In 2006, Sheragati Mtai was involved in a car accident that left her 
on a wheelchair. And by the time of her death in 2013, she died a very poor and depressed woman. And one could wonder why this firebrand politician of the 1970s and 1980s actually ended up into poverty, depression, etc. Looking at where Cheragati Mtai was coming from in the early 1970s and 1980s, as a woman standing against the regime of the time, she had to fight a lot to put her ideas and to put the regimes of the time on their toes. However, as the subsequent regimes took over, like when NAC took over, very little actually was done even in recognition of this particular woman. Very little history is given about this particular woman. And even to make matters worse, very little is given in recognizing such women like Chiragati Mtai as heroes and contributors to Kenya's democracy. Many times when you're talking about Kenya's reparation, Kenya's second reparation, Kenya's fight for democracy, we only hear names of men and not every man who actually participated in it. We only hear one or two men. We can hear of Baba and we will not hear about another person who actually was part of this strong movement that advocated for the reparation, multipartism, all those things in Kenya's political sphere. So from where Shiragati Mda is coming from is that this is a woman whose efforts had been shattered by, by the patriarchal structure and mentality that shaped Kenya's political space. At the time when she's dying a lonely woman, very depressed, very little also was done to bring her back to the chofu of fireblind politicians of the 1970s and 1980s that actually Kenyans knew. So just like that, in 2013, the eyes of the once fireprint woman, Philomena Chilagati Mtai, was shattered. But let it be known in Kenyan history that she was the first woman from Nandi and from current generation to rise above the cultural impediments, to cling to the position of a member of parliament, and even to challenge his own tribe's person, President Moi. She rose above tribal politics to national politics and patriotism to fight for the very needs of the Kenyan citizenry. May her soul continue resting in peace. And this was the story of Cheragati Mtai, Madam C.S.C. Catherine, your host, the girl with Indonese, a girl to talk. Kindly remember to subscribe, share, and comment on this video.